I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 19th of October, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Welcome to the show. And today we are going house hunting and we're pretty excited about it. This is always one of my favorite things to do. It's great to go out and just see what there is around the city or around the country, depending. And every house, I swear, is an adventure. Now, to some degree, we know what we're gonna look at before we go there because, you know, we make plans and, and have some specifications of what we're doing, but in many cases, it's a big surprise as well. There's a lot of cases where we just don't know what we're gonna find once you get in, because even when you know it's a colonial or it's five bedrooms or whatever, there are so many factors to play into that. And, uh, and today was certainly no different. So this was, this was a pretty fun day and very much a surprise. I didn't know we were gonna do this today. We've been talking about looking at some houses, but, we haven't gone out and do it. By the way, I'm on the GoPro Hero 9 today with the ND16 filter, uh, neutral density filter, because it's incredibly bright out here and hopefully it doesn't look too bad. And just walking around La Borio a little bit while we record. Uh, and I'm going to have to do this in segments because I want to tell you guys about the different houses that we see. And uh, I'm filming as much as I can during the day, but there's sometimes we, there's not an opportunity to film houses. Uh, some if they're really, uh, not the best. I don't necessarily want to be filming it for you, so uh, I tried to mix it up, but I did uh, manage to get some footage. Ooh, I'm completely dark now. And uh, see, whoa, where does this look good? I don't know. It's very, very bright today and very overhead. Um, so it's Wednesday. And I was actually pretty light at work. I've been doing a lot of work the last few days to get caught up on the videos. Uh, got some good footage uh, yesterday uh, of the food here in Leon, so that was cool. So we were able to get up this morning and Dominica just scheduled some places and she's like, we're going. So we hopped in the brand new Toyota Corolla, not new, but new to us, and <laughs> headed out uh, to do um, the house hunting. And it was, it was actually quite a successful day. And as we went, we just kept adding houses throughout the day. So I got as many as I felt I could, I could film for you. Uh, our first one um, was pretty early in the morning and we headed out to uh, El Calvario, which is my first time looking at houses in Calvario. So that was cool. It's a different neighborhood. It's a very, very small barrio, which I hope to do a bunch of filming for you guys in the future. I've been to the Iglesia Calvario, but technically the neighborhood is like in the shadow behind it to the east. Uh, so we, we barely have touched on it on the show. And there's like a whole area there that, that I need to explore for you guys because it's uh, it's pretty interesting, but it's a very closed off barrio. It's one of those ones that's nestled into a bend in the river. So it only has a couple bridges, uh, which means there's a lot less traffic going in and out of that area as the surrounding barrios, which are on the main side of the river, the city side of the river. So that's kind of cool. Hola. Hey, doing all right. Como esta? Bien, bebiendo todavía, estoy parando. No, oh, no, no tengo nada. ¿Cuándo grabar? No tengo. Eh, mira, 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 hola. <laughs> motor esto, el River Racing, todo rojo. <laughs> All right. Que la muy bien, oye. <laughs> Bu buenas tardes. Hell day. What's going on? You're on the show today. How are you? I'm <laughs> doing all right. How are you? How are you? <laughs> you looking good? Yeah, you too. Right there. Whoa, there hey, you what's are. up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> uh, so El Calvario looks pretty cool, and uh, and then we we so we headed off that one. I'm going to show, and then we went and got some that were completely crazy. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the crazy one uh, now because I have a chance to do so, and I, I didn't get anything to show you. So this really crazy house. It had some beautiful pictures online. The price is great, and I'm going to talk about it because I need to describe this house uh, because maybe some of you are interested, and certainly hit me up. I will hook you up with information on the house. So the house was listed as a five-bedroom, I believe, uh, for uh, $450 a month, which is, which is fantastic, right? Like that's, that's, uh, that's way too low, even for, uh, uh, Leon standards. And we're like, something must be wrong. Um, so we go to look at the house and it turns out, first of all, it's really close to Allen, which is really funny how close it was, but it was in a completely different like neighborhood. So to get to where it was, we had to go a totally different way. So to get from there to Allen's house, as the crow flies would be like 30 seconds, but to get there by the road is like 20 minutes. Like it's crazy. So as we get there, we discover that the roads are completely washed out. It hasn't been raining. We don't know where all this water came from, but it was like 
eight inches deep mud in every direction. So we were lucky to even get there. When we got close to it, we had to go through the garage for the buses, for the city buses or the inner city buses, and like drive through their parking lot, not the bus station, that would be weird too, but this was the bus maintenance garage kind of thing. So like a big open area with all the buses being worked on. Um, so that was like awkward and weird and sketchy. And then there was a big wall and it took forever. The, the people couldn't tell us exactly where the house was, which led to some of the confusion. And then when we finally got there, they let us in, they opened it up and the spot was beautiful. The house is gorgeous. Um, it, it, they just had someone leave it as a rental. Um, so they had to do some cleaning up and that's really why I didn't want to film because it really was um, not in the best shape, but in a way like as soon as they clean it, it'll look good and I don't want to be like, look at how terrible this is. But I swear it'll be nice because you could tell it would be really nice. It had a beautiful living room space. Uh, of course, the main parts of the house are open air. This is almost always the case. You're just That's just how things work. Um, and that's practical. That's pretty much what you want. There's very rarely does that not what you want. And uh, it had beautiful like plants and, and well curated areas. Um, and it had four really tiny bedrooms, but that's okay. And most of them were air conditioned, like already air conditioned and those that weren't could easily be. Um, and you, you often actually want, and people say, well, that's, that's terrible, tiny bedrooms. Actually, in a place like Nicaragua, you often want a really tiny bedroom in general because one, you want air conditioning to just chill it fast. You don't want to have to wait for a whole bunch of air turnover to get a room cold. I got a dog looking at me who's just about to bark. He's thinking about it. He's wondering, he's, he's in the house, he's whimpering. He wants to bark, he wants to bark. And uh, what is are these? And uh, so, so having small rooms, and because you spend all your time outside, very few people spend time in a bedroom. That's, that's really not much of a thing. You need to change your clothes, keep your stuff, sleep. That's about it, typically. That's like the lifestyle. Like obviously you can do what you want, but that's, that's how people typically live here. And so because of that, by the way, I'm walking past uh, La Antigua 1620, which as I'm recording this, in just a few hours, Paul and Alan and Anna are coming here for dinner. I may end up joining them as well. And uh, uh, because, so, so the small bedroom thing is not actually a negative to a lot of people. And four of them, great. Four matching tiny rooms, all very nice, just very small. So we're like, okay, okay, that could work. And then the master was fantastic, really big, beautiful, not exactly a walk-in closet. It was more of a closety hallway sort of thing that goes into the bathroom, which was quite nice. So all of that was really good. Um, the kitchen and some other things were in terrible disrepair. Uh, like they had a lot of termites, they had a lot of ants, all things they'll take care of. They're gonna repaint, all that kind of stuff. The biggest problems, one is that the overall space was not nearly as big as we had been hoping, and we really needed more rooms than they have. Just five bedrooms does not cut it for us because we need a lot of extra things like offices and stuff, and we just have a lot of people. So it didn't meet our needs, and it only had two real bathrooms. That was the killer. Five bedrooms we could work with, but it would need to have at least four bathrooms. This had two and then like a half bath somewhere like outside or something crazy. And I was like, no, that's in no way is that going to work, right? Then we step outside, the outside space was beautiful. It had a garden in the front, it had a giant uh, like paved driveway area. It was almost a parking lot. You could turn around, do all kinds of stuff, very nice. But that space had a maintenance quarters in it, like a caretaker's quarters, an entire separate cabin that caretakers lived in inside the outside security walls. Not a huge problem, but it's not our caretaker. It's just someone who lives in caretaker's quarters. So in our private space, inside our walls would be other people living, which is not the end of the world, but it's, a, it's not what you're looking for. When you're looking to rent a private house, you expect your walls to be your walls, not a small community of other people. Those people also had dogs of their own, Dobermans, very sweet puppies. They were just adorable. I'm sure our dogs would get along with them, but this space would have been already had dogs that lived there. There was a lot of potential for problems. There's no way we could let all the dogs just be together like it was the wild. And then there's a giant bodega in there. Really nice, not a problem, but the people who own the house want to continue to use the bodega. Not a huge problem, but it means they would be maintaining keys and coming and going into, again, what should have been our private space or what we assumed would have been our private space. Had they told us any of these facts ahead of time, how many bathrooms there were, because they gave us bad information, how many bedrooms there were. Again, they, they told us it was like a six bedroom, four bath, and then it turned out to be a five bedroom, two bath. 
and then the implication of it being this great private space that was walled and it was not private and and other people lived in it with dogs like it didn't meet our needs at all had those things not been there had that been a space our dogs could have run around um had it had three bathrooms three full bathrooms and the space was completely private and our dogs could have run around in it we may have gone for it because at 450 dollars and we may have been able to argue them down to like four 400 or 425 that may have that may have been so cheap that we'd have been like, oh, we got to do this. It's just, but the location was tragic. So hard to get to, so awkward. You'd never want to invite anybody over. Um, like it's, it, if you had a truck, it wouldn't be so bad. And I know I just had an episode where I'm like, you don't need a truck, you just need a car. And yeah, we were able to get in and out with a car. But even if you had a truck, it's not like you would want to go to this place, right? It would just make it more possible. And it's weird, awkward, just, I don't know. Um, if, if you're looking on a map, find Charlie's Barbecue Hotel. Yeah, Charlie's Barbecue Hotel. And then way behind that in the mud is this place. And honestly, it was a beautiful house. It had so much potential. The light was great. If the living room was small, but really comfy. There's, there was a, so many things that were like, if this just was, was a little bit tweaked or, and it wasn't even the building other than the bathroom thing. If it was just as expected that the private space was ours if the other people moved out and took their dogs and they couldn't go to the bodega without checking with us that could have worked but as it was it did not but if you don't need as many bathrooms and you don't need to let your dogs run around in the yard space this could be a beautiful house for someone uh with a for a family who want to have some small rooms and a good master um nice i'm sure it's a very safe location because who would ever find you and wade through the mud to to do anything and uh it just it, it, so close to being an amazing place and at once they clean it up right all the ants and things those are not going to be problems i guarantee they're going to take care of that stuff anytime you have an empty place or someone's been living in it and they've not been maintaining it you're going to get those things so just has to be has to be accounted for but other than that we had a pretty successful day we looked at things all over all kinds of different neighborhoods uh we went and looked north of san jose at the san felipe uh neighborhood and had a really interesting house up there uh, it was just, it was a great survey of the city and uh, I will do my best uh, to take you guys to show you that now. So that was, that was pretty much our day. We did that for the whole day. Um, and then this evening uh, it was, I, I got stuck working. Like I was doing my normal work until seven or so and then actually had an emergency call and got stuck working with customers until uh, about 9.30. At, a little bit after nine, I realized that I had talked to the girls about food but had not actually placed an order for any because the, I mean, our, living, our kitchen is bare, the cupboards are bare, there's no food, I have to order. And the plan was to get uh, Valenti's pizza and Luciano was like, yeah, I want to get that. And then it was after nine. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been on this call for hours. I got to get them food. Luckily, Valenti's was still open. Ugo was able to deliver. I put it in an order while on with a customer. I'm just, you know, I can go on my app on my phone, order it. And uh, the food arrived at about 940. Very easy lifesaver. And then uh, had dinner with the girls and we watched Stranger Things. It is Wednesday night. So uh, Paul and Dominica are at poker night at April's. Uh, and that's, that's what they do on Wednesdays. Um, I have no interest in playing poker because, uh, if I lose, it costs money and I don't want to do that. And if I win, I tend to play games pretty hard and people tend to resent when you play all out in, uh, friendly games. I don't know what friendly means intentionally not playing. Like it's very weird to me. I conceptually have a hard time with games. You don't try to win. Like what, what's the fun in like, why bother playing? Let's just sit around and have beers. Like, that's great. Don't, don't put a game in front of me and then be like, but don't play. Just pretend. I don't know, not my thing. Um, so no interest in, in poker night, but they enjoy it. So they had a lot of fun uh, hanging out and doing that. And um, that's pretty much the day. So let's go look at some houses and then we're gonna do the throwback because we have one of those to do as well. Off to the first house. All right, this is our first house we're looking at. This one is fantastic. The outdoor space here is huge. Bright yellow house right on the Carretera. This is Nicaragua Route 3, the Pan American Bypass on the east side of Leon. The barrio here is El Calvario. Uh, so it's a very small barrio, pretty cut off from downtown, so you don't get a lot of cross traffic. This house has direct access onto the, the highway here. It's just in front. There's a gate that goes down to that. It has this carport and driveway that comes past the house and drives through the backyard I guess it is and then there's a giant back wall and gate that goes directly into the barrio so you have barrio and carretera access this is the front door from under the carport beautiful atrium here not real large but walkway all the way around 
Nice big garden in the middle with some stepping stones. It's all very, very attractive, well done, pretty modern design. This is a modern colonial. This is the living room in the front right corner, I guess, the northeast corner. Uh, the pool here is enormous, brand new tile. They just finished it. It's going to be filled before anyone can move in. So they just gotten the tile done. This is one of the biggest pools I've seen. Leon does not actually have that many pools. This one's really, really large. And a nice patio space there between the pool and the highway. So pretty private there and wall all the way around. This is under the, uh, I'm sorry, this is from the front side near the pool. And then this is coming in from the pool direction, looking through the atrium. So this is heading south in the house. Lots of open space there, those big trees, really nice. You get shade, but a lot of open air. So I like this modern colonial take where you get the advantages of a colonial structure, but also a lot of the feel of a modern one. It's one of the bedrooms that was the weird one that didn't have its own bathroom. This is, I'm not actually sure what this space is. Another, this is from the kitchen right now. Oh, that was the dining room that we just saw. We're standing in the kitchen. Here's the kitchen itself, kind of the modern uh, country style. We saw the same thing in uh, in Guatemala when we were there just uh, a few months ago. And a little atrium off of the, the kitchen as well. That is where they hang the laundry, uh, or they intend to at least. Uh, but it is a nice space, lots of good light, and again, gives that colonial feeling, lots of spots for air. This is around the other corner. The washroom in the back. In America, we call this a mudroom, but this is the utility space here. There is a water tower and cool outdoor lanterns, uh, like street lanterns. It's pretty cool. Uh, that is another bedroom in the back. It's supposed to be the live-in maid's quarters. Uh, back in the kitchen and where the kitchen connects into the atrium. So most of the bedrooms are off to the left there. The uh, master's in the front left corner there, the living room in the front right, that is the door going out to the pool area right here. And then on the right that we just went past is where the, um, the more public spaces of the house are. But this pool access to the house really is nice. That is a utility uh, kind of shed in the corner there. And uh, this is way up above the Carretera, so the noise is not as bad as it seems like it would be. It's, it's noticeable, but the, the sound mostly uh, bounces off the embankment, so it's not terrible. So these are the, the main bedrooms here along the right. Lots of good-sized bedrooms with large closets and their own bathrooms. So not huge, but that is a walk-in closet. A, a relatively small walk-in closet and fresh air. So you get that because of the atrium designs, like I said, of this modern colonial, you have a, a good ability to open up the house and have just lots of air coming through, but also all the bedrooms can be closed off and air conditioned. Some of them are already air conditioned and some you would need to add. The living room, however, cannot be air conditioned. It is wide open to the atrium. We stopped and got nachos in between houses. So we're heading off to the next one now. This is just at the, uh, at the Pronto. So this house, is a modern in the San Felipe neighborhood just north of San Juan in El Centro. So this is very central, very urban. Beautiful front yard though. It's That's the gating there right on the street, but a really nice mature plants here. The owner of this place was so sweet. He came out and gave us a tour personally. And he said this was his parents' house for 50 years. Its backyard is phenomenal. Big grassy area with the big uh, plant walls. I love those. And then that opens into this big enclosed space. Not a lot of structure back here, but so much room to do so many different things. It would be great. This is from that back corner. That is the owner there giving us the tour. Those are all bathrooms around the back. And then this is the other side of the house. It has a long open corridor all the way down with open screens above. So you get air all the way around the house. And then we went on to another house. This is, um, I'm not actually sure exactly of the location. This is in Colonia Universidad. Um, this one, uh, the last one, they were asking a thousand dollars, and we don't know what they would take. This one, they said they were asking like five seventy-five, and then, then it turned out this upstairs space, so like, oh, that's not included. You have to pay extra, but it was included in the numbers that they gave for five seventy-five. I'm pretty sure if you actually made them an offer for about five fifty, that they would take it for the entire place. Has a nice yard, very attractive. Everything's modern and well done. It was not big enough for our our usage, um, but we did enjoy getting to see it and it has some nice features, a couple nice rooms. That sliding glass goes into a beautiful little enclosed plant area that you can open up and get more air. The main part of the house, very open, cute dining room. Here, I'm gonna show this a little bit. It's really cute the way that they did it. Great design, 
not necessarily a great use of space, but really attractive little feature. Uh, had some nice outdoor spaces. It does not have an enclosed garage or even a covered carport. So your car does have a, can be inside the gate, but it is just sitting in the garden. Um, so not a lot of protection. It's not really an issue for theft, but it's more of like the weather is going to really get to your car. But overall, it was a pretty cute house. Uh, if you didn't need um, to have a need a lot of space, it's pretty perfect, and a lot of breezeways uh, you can get air around. And that was our house tours for the day. All right, it's time to do the throwback to October 19th, 2019. And looking back, it was a couple things. One, this is the first day that we did a split for uh, the day. I, I tried doing this for a little while. I don't do it anymore because in the old days, all of my videos had to be done in a single shot. I didn't have any means of editing. I didn't know how to edit. I had just started learning at about the time I started doing the vlog, but not quite. So the vlog actually started before I started learning those things. And so every single entry that I did in the old days was shot one on a cell phone and not a great one like an iPhone. It was the Samsung, which I really was disappointed with. And then pretty soon thereafter, but it's the Samsung's at this point, the One Plus, which I was much happier with, but it was not as good as the iPhone and didn't last that long. Uh, but those are my early ones. I didn't have the GoPro yet. I had an old GoPro 5, but I had not used it in years. Uh, and I did not yet get the 9 until a little ways into the vlog. So at this point, I was just working on a phone. I didn't have any video editing knowledge, tools, experience, anything. And I wanted to keep the vlog really simple. And the idea that I would edit the videos would never really cross my mind because that's just not the way the vlog was. But I started to get to a point where like they were getting a little bit longer. I was only a couple days in and I wanted to be able to upload things like as they happen. So I would record, upload, and, and then catch up the next day. So this is the very first day that I did that. And about halfway through the day, middle of the afternoon, I went out to get food for everybody. And while I was out, I was gonna go swimming did the first video from a car. It's also the first time that I did a car update, I think. And then later uh, filmed the rest of the day and uploaded that. So exciting things that happened back then. So one thing is just interesting to see what we were eating back then. We were very excited about being able to get Burger King Impossible Whoppers. That was a relatively new thing. And we, we just loved them back then. And we still like them, but it was a huge part of our diet at the time and we would go out to get Burger King on the days that they had the specials and get the like eight of them for, you know, $6 for every two or whatever. We just get stacks of them and we go crazy. And uh, we were getting a Taco Bueno all the time, which of all things, I miss Taco Bueno. Actually, those two things I miss quite a bit. I do miss the Impossible Whoppers. They have a different flavor profile than food here, and we can't get the Impossible Burgers. It's very hard to get the Beyond Burgers. Um, those kinds of things we miss. However, when we go back to the States and eat it, it doesn't taste the same to us anymore. So we miss it in a memory kind of way, but it's not something we can go back and get again and solve that problem. So unfortunately, we just have to remember how much we liked them. I don't know if they've changed or we've changed, but it's probably us, like that just makes sense, but it can't prove it. Uh, and Taco Bueno, I miss a ton. That I guarantee I would still like if there aren't any of those in Houston. So even when we're back visiting, family in Houston, or if we go to New York to see my dad, or if we're in Miami for a, a transfer, we can't get Taco Bueno. We'd have to go to Dallas. We don't have any plans to do that. That's a lot of extra driving that we really can't do. So that is that was just my favorite Tex-Mex. And it makes me so sad that we discovered it only in our last couple of years of living in Texas. And their prices are so good. The food is so excellent. If you're going to be in the Dallas area, eat Taco Bueno. They are amazing. And they have great vegetarian selections as well, both bean and potato based food items. Also got Long John Silvers, uh, lots of things for the family, did all that back then, was swimming. So three years ago, I was swimming, attempting to swim every day, and that's something that Kat and I did together quite a bit. She would come and we would go together to the Nauditorium. We had a membership in Farmer's Branch. Dominica did too, but she wouldn't go very often. Once in a while, I would take the girls, and that was a big thing we were doing three years ago to try to get healthy. And something we miss here that I don't really have a way to swim. I'd really like to get a swimming pool. I hope that that is something we can address in the near future. And we have talked about building a pool out at the beach because we do have the space and putting in a pool and having like a pool bar and stuff would be pretty cool. So that's something we would like to do in the kind of near future, like maybe in the next year. Uh, the other big thing that we did today, other than work and stuff three years ago, is 
this is the day three years ago that we finished Trail of the Twister. Nancy Drew, Trail of the Twister. It was a big day of video gaming for the girls and I. We had for me and the girls. We had a really good time. That was one that we really liked, and I talked about it quite a bit on the video. So please go back, do me a favor, check out the video from three years ago if you're wondering. I'm gonna put the links below, but also uh, you can go anytime to my page. Go to all videos or uploads or whatever it's called. It gives you the list of absolutely everything. Go to sort by do oldest first, and then you can just go right through them right there. So it's easy to find them as long as they're not too old. Once we get into the middle ones, they're like two years old. We're going to, or now two years old. They'll be three years at the time we get to them. Those are going to be tough because then you're going to have to scroll and scroll and scroll. So the links in the video here will be critical. But uh, at the end of this video, I will try to link it. I will try to link it in the description below, and you can always scroll back and find it. It is also three years ago our 13 day countdown so we're under two weeks to alan and rachel and my trip to nicaragua where we are now well where alan and i are rachel is not she is back in belgium today all right thanks for joining me please remember to like and subscribe comments below go check out the old video that's part of your your homework uh share this with friends and if you would like to support this channel you can buy me a coffee that link is below as well and also check out my other channels, Take Flight, which was kind of my pre-vlog material, and check out Central American Living, which we're getting up and running uh, with short videos of houses here in Central America. And I will see all of you tomorrow.